Hello everyone, welcome to a, another part of my E30 build. So what I'm looking at doing today is really quickly attempting to finish removing off all of the bits for the electric uh, convertible rooftop because as some of you guys might remember from one of my first vlogs, the previous owner started to dismantle everything and I basically thought it's easier for me to put it all to manual than you know what in case you guys keep hearing the cars going past my close the door but it's like 27 degrees right now and it's it's hot inside the car but yeah so previous owner decided to remove a lot of it it's easier for me to just change it all to manual because I don't know if anything is broken or if they were doing something, if they were trying to diagnose something. I have no idea what was going on. So, yeah, I'm going to look into quickly showing you guys what's needed to make it all manual for from, from what I have. So, I'm just going to get on that right now. First things first, I've got to undo the roof latches. part of convertibles man right let's get to it so I got the roof part way up like that as you guys would normally expect just gonna pop this part up here as well to get under here now on the automatic ones you have the one of the motors just there and obviously you have these two cables one on each side to one of the other motors and that basically latches that part closed like that to hold the roof down now without that being plugged on or anything like that I have no control over it so I'm going to quickly look into removing well I might not remove much of it see what I can remove and I'm just going to basically take it bit by bit and install the new parts so everyone, what you need to do is this bolt just here and it's got another one just there that needs to be removed that's where the new locks are going to go on in place so I'm just going to look at removing those I've bought this just now it's from Halfers it's a bit longer purely because the amount of space you have in here you, you don't have enough space to get a ratchet in and you don't have enough space to really get enough leverage because this is here that's there so you've got this small little window space that one's nice and loose happy days second one up Let's try to get this one. There we go. So all loose now. Just quickly get these removed. So it's another day and ah uh, need to unlock the car first. And um right so I'm getting back into working on the E30. Ran out of time yesterday so couldn't get it finished off. So just Undoing the roof again. Lift up. So what I need to do now is actually remove the rear interior. Um, two bolts on each side need to be screwed in from the inside of the actual um, of the car. So I'm just going to get to removing all that. Once I have done so, I will keep you guys updated. So yeah, see you guys in a minute. First off, we need to take these off, and the good thing is, is mine was prepped with uh, handle holes, I'll call them. So you just basically pop them off. You've got the popping points there, and these hook in at the bottom. So you just basically pop up. So put something in, pry it open, lift out, just like that. There's two screws there. So you can see there's screws here to hold a 
speaker this is where the handle is going to go for the latch for the roof so up next let's get on to actually removing the interior seats so i'm just gonna move that off from there as well you just basically lift up from what i've read and yeah that's one that's two first slide cushions out as you can see you have that just there at the front which pops in with them just there so I just put that out be nice to actually get that all cleaned up and then with the actual rear seats I believe all you have to do is push it upwards you have to obviously move these to the side as well and then just yank it upwards so that's what I'm going to look at doing I'm going to put the phone down and get that done what I might actually do is first put the top down so it gives me headspace So as you guys can see, how that goes in place is actually cups into here. That's basically it. That's where everything sits. This is basically the heater mechanism for the rear screen. So if you ever get any misting or anything like that, it just warms it all up. So right now, I'm looking to removing these side panels. Hope you guys can hear me still. So yeah, I'm gonna remove the side panels. Um, so I can get access to those points. So I'm just gonna quickly go get a screwdriver. Okay. Let everyone know uh, that this one and this one were dabbing this whole time like foolish little kids. Your kids. Shush! <laughs> right, so that's these. Do you guys want to help me lift that up again? Yeah. Hold on, that thing. Oh! I see it. So My bad. Thing. Where's the screws? Is that both the washers yet? Yeah. Need them left now. Okay, go on. Lift it up. So basically, this screw there sits right here with this. I'm gonna take that screw off just there. Let's see where that screw ends up there. Yeah. I knew you wouldn't. So yeah, as you can see, it just screws up into here. It's gonna catch this bit while I take that other side off. So I need two hands for that. Peace. So to get that in there, what I'm really 
doing right now is I've got this little extender thing where and I squeeze the one end it basically has the little prongs coming out and then I'm just going to put the screw I mean the bolt sorry into that let me do that real quick so the reason why I did that is because you actually try and put it in it keeps falling down otherwise and you want something to actually hold the bolt in place and then you can actually like guide it in it's pretty long spot in there to actually get it from one side all the way to the other and that way you can actually just guide it through so let me just do that one and then we'll get to the next bit yeah right so i just figured out as this goes in here oh, someone's coming up on the driveway but yeah hold up so as this goes through and through here you got the cables obviously coming all the way around you feed the cable in through this gap here Amazing. and then it comes to on these sides just here comes all the way to the back side around the other side sorry so is this gonna go in <laughs> yeah let me try and do it a different way so it just goes whoop in through there I should bring it out through there and this one needs to get fed so you can see it just comes out of that hole there this is going to be the further side so I'm just going to feed that through as much as I can right now just move a few things out the other way boom let me just get that done and then see what's next you get a little grommet that you just basically wedge into this area and these come with that just there so you got these two little areas here and that part of the clip just basically slides in and holds them in place when they come through on the other side as well so I'm just gonna put the roof back on align everything up and then go from there So you just bring the cable around here. What you gotta try and do is just pin that in against that. That's basically what I think it, it needs to be done. So guys, to remove these old ones, I've figured out that for the time being, First thing to move is these little clips here. Um, so you just basically pop them off. I just managed to do the other one. Just trying to figure out how to do this one now. You basically just gotta pop them off one way or another. Oh, there we go. I think we got it. There we go. Pass that off. Then we just gotta basically pop that off like that. Now I just gotta figure out how to take this part off here. Cause that seems pretty nicely snug on. So time to figure that one out. There we go, that's off, that whole part is off. When selecting package give breakdown thing of it all, then at 9 o'clock p.m. Right, that's that one off, let's just go to the other side. I'm not going to really record that, don't think it's really interesting to watch, unless you guys want to. Right, so I've managed to install the actual locking mechanisms and everything else now. I'm just going to show you it all. I didn't have time to record it while I was doing it because 
the way everything was i was on my own needed both my hands and i was just trying to figure it out at the same time so i'll show you what i've managed to figure out and what it is that you guys will need to do if you are looking at doing this yourself um it's pretty simple um it's just a bit more tedious than anything um there's one little bit that I accidentally dropped you shouldn't drop and it's these little rubber tabs that hold in the cables I'll be okay for now because I have the other one still but as I'll show you what has happened you'll understand why I say that it is important so let's get to so if I just lift this up you'll see I've ran the cable all the way across I had these tabs in here already um, I don't know if everyone comes with them standard so this is the first cable that goes all the way across to the other side which looks eh, it's pretty simple pretty easy I'll show you the other side so for the time being while I've been working on the car I've got a little rod microfiber to protect the metal just basically holding this whole up, back shoe up and so this is the lock mechanism so you've got two bolts come out just here and just over there if you can see the other one just there at the top so those two bolts you get to from inside this area just there I don't know if I can show you that hope you can see them so you get to it screw them in this sits in this groove just here this is all gonna need a good clean once I've finished um, so you connect the cables up just like this so the white little bit here hooks into the first part of the latch and the second part is obviously part of the actual um, housing for the actual lock. So this is just a plastic little area, just sits in the groove. You run the cable all the way across. So this is the furthest away one. You've got the, the handle just over there. So it goes all the way across all the way across here there's a second mechanism as I said before there so these are basically they're reversible put it on on this side or put it on the other side both ways it works the same because essentially all that's happening is the cables getting pushed that way so both locks can either be used one way or the other you've got the actual oh. there's the area again now those areas are quite important because when it comes to a lining up where this goes in you're going to need to make sure that it fits in perfectly in here I'm going to need to align mine and all it is is literally the two bolts move them around so you get it to the perfect point where when the, the shoe comes down it clicks this in place and that's it once you have that you follow the cables through to that grommet that we sh I showed you earlier so you follow it in through to there that then brings it out here you bring that forward these basically clip here and then before you actually screw this all in I had this off I tried to connect them through but because everything's so tensioned you're not going to really be able to do it so you have to kind of balance the handle through this gap area and through this area here in the back and this is the area where I used to um, barely get that focusing and this gap area is where I used to connect everything up now on the actual back of the um, handle I'll try and see if I can show you the very important bit just there so I've just removed the handle very quickly to show you this. So this is where the cables connect to. So obviously when you pull, I'm just going to get this to focus. So when you pull, you can see the cables are connected up in through those little gold areas. Now you see the bottom one has a little rubber tab holding the cable in place. Because I've lost the top one, it actually fell through this gap and I have not been able to find it since. I want to leave that one because obviously gravity will hold it in place and want to um, put some tape and everything over it on the top to make sure that it doesn't actually come off 
but fingers crossed that'll be okay and then once you've connected that you basically then bring this to alignment here and then you make sure once you've aligned it up that it's all strong enough a quick little tip from me is make sure you test everything before you fit this on because just in case you don't have enough tension going on to both locks it's just extra hassle if you close it it gets locked and then you gotta try and pry it open somewhere or another i haven't had that difficulty fingers crossed i don't but that's just something for you guys to be aware of when it comes to doing this yourself and that's basically how the car looks right now while i'm doing everything got a new one of these to go on so i'll probably do a how do i video on how to change that on this car as well but it's a pretty simple job once you actually get everything off um, removed the old cables as well from here I've still got that motor in place um, whoever had the car before has managed to mess up the little screw inside of that so it's gonna be a bit more difficult to take off than I initially thought but it looks clean it's pretty simple take off later run I don't really mind keeping it in there for the time being until I look to selling it if anyone wants it um, for anything that they're looking at building but yeah that's it that's it for the time being I'm just gonna clean up inside the actual car because in this area just over there and same on this side it gets really dusty over 24 years of the car being in existence so I'm gonna look at giving that all a clean and yeah that's it oh when it comes to actually doing this, you need to remove these as I showed you before. For this car, it, for me, it was just two screws around the actual surrounds and then you just lift it up and out. I'll probably do a reversal on when I actually install it to show you guys how it was removed and how to install because I didn't record taking it off. My bad. So yeah gonna do that another little tip this right here see with these threads this needs to be in the right tension for the other lock to grip when the hoods closed if it's all the way screwed in the other side won't unlock if it's all the way loose the other side won't unlock so you have to find the right distance for you to be able to lock the other side and unlock it again this is the reason why I would say do not close the the actual shoe roof cover um, until you've actually tested everything out right so as promised um, I'm going to show you a quick little video of how to install these side panels um, I've quickly added some extra cable to these speaker wires that were installed by the previous owner and then chopped off so hanging them in there for the time being while I install the side panels now obviously with the door hand I mean the the roof handle here I will need to cut that for the new trim piece but that being said I'm gonna get the actual main part in it looks so much cleaner than it was before which is nice obviously this area you wouldn't see um, but it's still nice to know that it's clean when you reinstall everything back on. So all you got to do really is just make sure that you've got everything in the right way. Just slide it over the old parts. Make sure the belt's out. That's it. Now there's a little trim piece over in the back area here. Um, you can't really see it. I'll show you from this side. So when the seat cushions are in place, this little trim piece that covers the seat belt there is going to sit over that there. So just there. Just something for you to be aware of when you're actually doing this. So when you have this all in place, now I just got to screw these two screws in. 
I'm gonna grab the screws. And just gotta make sure everything's aligned. First screw in, second screw. Now, just remember that when it comes to these, it's all about alignment. You just want to make sure you align the screws in the area. I like to apply a little bit of pressure to make sure everything sits in flush. And that's it really simple one thing i have noticed while making the video is when i took off the seat i did say it was just a matter of pulling upwards now it depends if anyone's ever actually been to the back seat area of your car because as you can see you got two little holes just there for two bolts to go through and they would go into those two just there just something for you to be aware of when you're actually in well removing and installing these back i'm gonna try and get in touch with a someone or just find a bolt that actually goes in to actually connect mine in properly because i do want to make sure mine is all done to the best ability that i can so yeah that's just something else to add to it and that's it guys everything's been fully installed just got my um cover just there still loose because We'll see with the new handle in place. Just need to cut out the right size for all of that. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's everything. It's now officially on securely. You can see how nice and flush the trim actually fits with the previous part. And obviously to unlock now, it just needs a... That's it. Everything opens up nice and smooth. Happy days. So that's the car completed. Just want to say thank you everyone again for tuning in and watching in, watching a quick little demonstration of how to actually install the manual um, roof latches on the E30 convertible. If you liked this, uh, you found this informative for you, then please make sure you hit the like button and or just leave a comment and i also appreciate it if you subscribe and watch my e30 build you know plenty of stuff happening to this car constantly so it'll be awesome to have you guys all along with the ride for now